cracking, everybody. Welcome to Boo TV. While you're here, do me a big favor and like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell so you stay notified whenever we upload a new video. Thank you for stopping in. I appreciate you for watching. Thanks for the support. And let's get into the topic for today. Kobe Bean Bryant often gets criticized unfairly and inaccurately um, for his first three championships. And people make it seem like he had very minor contributions and pretty much just road shack to the finish line. But if you watch those games, <clears throat> and if your memory serves you well, if you go back and do your research, you would realize that that wasn't the case. Um, especially after that first championship, those next two championships, Kobe Bryant really held his own and um, had significant contributions to the success of that championship run. And what people do, they'll just look at the finals appearances and not look at the rounds leading up to the finals. And the funny thing about that is in the Western Conference, well, in the NBA back then, <clears throat> Those first three rounds were often more challenging than whoever their finals opponent was coming out the East. They were facing championship contender teams in round one, two, and three before they even got to the finals, where they would meet a lesser opponent. And Kobe Bryant, uh, his best contributions came in those Western Conference rounds um, where he was extremely dominant in many of those series. Now. I put a video out uh, maybe a month or two ago highlighting Kobe Bryant's 2000-2001 playoff run in which he was extremely dominant and arguably he carried the team the first couple rounds and then Shaq took over in the finals. Kobe dominated against those tougher opponents. That's when they only lost one game throughout the entire finals or throughout their playoff run. Um, and some of those Western Conference games were extremely close and Kobe made some clutch buckets to uh, secure those victories. And while they did lose one game to the 76ers, I don't think many people would argue that uh, the Sixers probably weren't as good as the Sacramento Kings and the San Antonio Spurs that year. Um, with that being said, uh, I think in the midst of that three-peat, I think Kobe's best performances and best output came in that 2000-2001 series uh, run. I think that was better than his 2000 run and better than his uh, 2002 run. Um, but today we're talking about the 2002 run. And um, for the entire run, uh, they played 19 games in the 2002 playoffs. Kobe averaged 26.6 points, almost 27. Uh, 5.8 rebounds, just shy of 6. 4.6 assists. Um, in those 19 games. So pretty damn good output. He carried his own. He had major contributions. And that, I'm not even looking at the defensive side. Um, the dude played absolutely phenomenal on the defensive end. Almost one block a game, 1.4 steals. And uh, lockdown, he was a lock, Kobe was a lockdown defender. Caused uh, his matchups to take extremely difficult shots, forcing him to pass the ball up. Um, and completely locking him down. His defensive tenacity is only second to Michael Jordan uh, as a shooting guard. Only second. Only second to MJ as a shooting guard. Don't forget, Kobe has 12 All-NBA defensive selections, nine first time. Let's not forget that. Um, but more specifically, um, I... I, I uh, I was looking for a video to watch where it gave us highlights of every single Kobe Bryant play from that entire run, first round, second round, third round finals, but I couldn't find one. So today we're just gonna look at his highlights from the 2002 NBA finals. But just to recap the other series, uh, uh, Kobe Bryant's performance. So round one, they faced the Portland Trailblazers, probably Kobe's worst series in this run. Uh, remember back then it was only five game series, so the Lakers won in a sweep 3-0 against the Portland Trailblazers. Um, first game, uh, well, Kobe's points, 34, 19, 25 respectively. Um, 3-5-7 on the assists, 7-6-4 on the rebounds. 
But uh, in two of those games, he shot poorly. His first two games got off to a slow start. Um, 10 for 28 game one, 5 for 28, 21 game two, and then uh, 9 for 19, a shade under 50% on game three. They won in a sweep. All right. Um, next uh, opponent was the San Antonio Spurs. The Lakers beat them 4-1. Uh, Kobe Bryant had an all-around solid performance. Uh, shot at least mid 40s to 50 percent every game with the exception of one game um, had good rebounds and good assists in that series as well all right had a 30 point game a couple performances in the high 20s and a 20 point game all right after that we all know about the sacramento king series the game that uh, the series that went seven games and was controversial and then we find out years later that there was um, some illegal activity going on in that series regarding the referees and the tampering of the series. Um, unfortunate to hear that. The Lakers won in seven games. Uh, Kobe Bryant uh, uh, played pretty well. Um, had one game where he shot at least 50%. Uh, most of the other games, he was somewhere between, uh, somewhere around the mid-40s. And then he had two poor performances shooting wise three actually he had an eight for 24 an 11 for 29 and a 10 for 26 but the other four games he was solid but even that game that game seven where he shot 10 for 26 uh he chipped in 30 points 10 rebounds seven assists uh two steals or two blocks something like that so he impacted the game in other areas um uh with that being said so and if you watch that game, the, the defense was stifling. I mean, we're, we're looking back at an era where the defense was stifling, period. All right? The defenses were different. Not many. There wasn't, pretty, there wasn't any notable shooting guard shooting like 49, 50% from the field um, on a season. That didn't exist back then. That, that wasn't a thing. You can go look at it yourself. Um, and then moving into the NBA Finals Series against the New Jersey Nets where the Lakers won 4-0. Um, this was probably Kobe Bryant's best series, arguably, <laughs> but he honestly didn't shoot that much in this series. His shot attempts went down significantly, and I'll tell you why. But in the 2002 NBA Finals, uh, Kobe averaged 26.8 points on 51.4 shooting, 5.8 rebounds, 5.3 assists a game. And at age 23, Kobe Bryant became the youngest player in NBA history to win three championships, okay? Now, the reason why Kobe's contributions went down in this series um, is because Phil Jackson wanted to take more, um, uh, what's the word I want to use? Wanted to take more advantage of the matchup, right? So you think about those Western Conference series, they usually had a pretty solid center or at least two bigs, one or two bigs that were pretty damn good or all-star level. Um, that was matching up with Shaq. Though still, no matchup for Shaq. We understand that. But, um, you know, he had to deal with Duncan. He had to deal with She. He had to deal with, uh, what's that boy's name? Uh, Vladi Divac, C. Webb, to a lesser degree, is more of a power forward. Sometimes he plays center. But, um, and then uh, they even caused matchup problems for Shaq because they could shoot the mid range jumper as well when they were put in at center. But Phil wanted to take full advantage of the Shaquille O'Neal matchup against the New Jersey Nets because they were generally undermanned, they were undersized. Um, I think their starting center, if I'm not mistaken, was Kenyon Martin, who was a very undersized center. If I'm not mistaken, I, I didn't go back and really recap on all this stuff, just going off memory, but I'm pretty sure Kenyon Martin was their starting center. Um, no, hold on, let me go check. So no, I was wrong, I forgot. It was their starting center was actually Todd McCulloch. I completely forgot about that guy. And Kenyon Martin was starting at power forward. I just thought it was Kenyon Martin because of he just, he just catch all the lob plays in the paint all the time. Um, so for some reason I just thought he was the undersized center, but no, it was Todd McCulloch who was the starting. But even more, that even adds to my my point even more. Even though he's he's taller, he's seven foot. Even though he's bigger than Kenyon Martin. He is much more insignificant than Kenny Martin. A worse, Kenny Martin was a better defender, even though he was smaller. So they wanted to take advantage of that matchup with Shaquille O'Neal. And Phil Jackson went to Kobe, he went to Shaq. He said, hey, we're going through Shaq more. 
we're taking advantage of this match of this matchup and that's it kobe's like all right bet so when i say he really didn't take that many shots i mean that he really did not take that many shots and those four games against the new jersey nets in game one kobe only took 16 shots in game two kobe only took 15 shots in game three kobe took 23 shots in game four kobe only took 16 shots in two of those games he shot over 60 percent from the field um so you know for all the the talk about him and that's that's another false narrative going around this guy was just always ball hauled and always shot chucking i was like that was not the case dude Kobe Bryant had his moments, yes. Was that the norm? No. He had plenty of games. There's a large sample size where Kobe's a team player, a willing passer, and fitting into the system and take and uh, toning his game down um, to let Shaq get more shine, let other players get more shine within the triangle offense. We all know Kobe was capable of much more than that. Come on now. So even with the small amount of shot attempts, he made the best of them, hit his free throws, um, was efficient, and, you know, still, you know, averaged 26, almost 27 points in that series. But enough of me talking. I've been ranting on too much. I just wanted to give some background before we watch the video. But let's go ahead and check out the highlights, the Kobe Bryant highlights from specifically the 2002 NBA Finals. Let's get it popping with game one, baby. Good defense, fadeaway jumper. Money. This was his uh, first playoff series since winning the, his first championship, where he, he came in uh, without the afro. Behind the back, good pass over to Shaq, good finish by Shaq. I was about to say, I bet your spin move is going to come. Left hand, great move. Can't do nothing about it. Who's that guard now? Is that Kerry Kittles? Match up, can't do nothing about it. Mid range jumper, pure. Pure of heart. Bingo. Bingo. Good pass. Now that was, he actually did a pretty good job to try to slow his momentum down once he got up into the air or just before he got into the air so he wouldn't take that charge. It, it would have looked more egregious than we actually did. Yo, Keith, I hated Keith Van Horn, bro. Keith Van Horn was tall as hell. Mm. Get off me, boy. You're going to catch this poster. Look at this. Sit down. Tomahawk off two feet. Bam. Sit down, boy. Sit down, boy. Absolutely, and they've lost their focus, their concentration, and determination. But Robert Ory continues to be outstanding. Mm, tough shot over two defenders, one being a seven-foot long man, Keith Van Horn. Pass that ball up. Who's that? Is that Shaw? That's Brian Shaw. Good job. By Ooh, another dunk on him. Dunk on him twice, baby. Good job just moving without the basketball. Good pass. Good pass to Rick Fox with the cut hair. Hold that ball, secure that victory. All things considered, the New Jersey Nets played a pretty good game. They lost by five. They, they still, I would have fouled right there. Make it a free throw shooting contest. I didn't know how many timeouts they had though. Hey, as long as there's as long as there is time on the shot clock, anything's possible. Bang. Mid range assassin, baby. I'm going to have to do a video at, um, about Kobe Bryant's defensive prowess. Mm, sit down, boy. Left with the left hand. Um, Kobe Bryant's defensive prowess. 12-time uh, 
Oh, good footwork. Getting around three Nets players off the pivot. Um, it's still here. That's it. Tipped it to himself. One-handed tomahawk. Full extension. Uh, 12-time All-NBA Defensive Player. Nine-time first-team All-NBA Defensive Selections. Nothing to be scoffed at. Look at Robert Ory with the with the slight fadeaway. I see you, dog. Go ahead, Keith Van Horn. Send him into the tunnel. Half time. Jason Kidd, my favorite point guard of all time. They only shot 29% to the Nets in the first half. They're just six points behind. Are you concerned that they shot so poorly and they're still in the ballgame? Not really. I mean, we just uh, continue to play our game. Notice he's wearing the you know, Kobe ones. So he wore initially wore those Kobe ones in the, uh, in the early championship year. And then 2001-2002 season, he switched to the Kobe Bryant 2s. That, that sneaker got a whole bunch of backlash. I had a pair, but looking back on it, it wasn't really a good design. I did think the white and yellow ones were clean, but the other ones were gross. Um, and then um, after that, he reverted back to the Kobe 1s. And then after that, he started... He was pretty much done with Adidas and started wearing different sneakers. He started wearing Jordan brand and Nikes and the other sneakers. Testing the water. Ooh, nice mid-air move. Michael Jordan style. Uh, testing the waters with other uh, sneaker franchises. Money. Money. Sit down, boy. Yeah, Shaq absolutely feasted. Feasted on these nets. Spot up. Three-point shot, hand in the face, no dribble needed. Mamba style. And that was all the shots he took in game two. Oh, is he going to get one more off? Couple feet from behind the line. Bang, bang, boogie. Bang, bang, boogie. That was like three or four feet behind the line. After coming on, after coming off that series with the Sacramento Kings, that tough series, this Nets team was was nothing. was It wasn't even competition. I mean, some of those games were really close. Make no mistake about it. But that Sacramento Kings team really tested the Lakers. But I think the Nets were one of the better defensive teams in the league this year. Do crossover. Crossover left, switch to right. Into the big fella. Triangle motion, in motion. Good Oh, he's gone. This is Boom. Just throw it down. Two hands. Sunlight. Get a dose of that post play. Look how strong he is. He just, just bullied him when he went into his move. Even after the post, when he went into his move, stepped in center. Too strong. Too strong. He wasn't as strong as Mike, but he was almost as strong as Mike. Fade away, Jay. You know that's Kobe's bread and butter. I think it's also funny there's a false narrative that goes around saying that, oh, Kobe only started going to the mid-range game and started working on it and going to it more as he got older. I'm like, dude, Kobe's mid-range game has been around since his young, young days. He was shooting fadeaway jumpers with a decent dosage. Ooh, this wasn't, ooh, good D. This wasn't nothing that he had to revert to because of old age. But he's, because even in Kobe's old age, um, his athleticism still had not waned yet. Y'all remember, all the way up to year 16, Kobe was still dunking on people. Remember, people started calling him Vino. They, we had never seen a player at, play at this level at year 16 
And then after that, he tore his Achilles, and Kobe was never the same again. But up, up until year 16, he was still yamming on people. Nasty facials. He actually had two dunks in that campaign, that year 16 campaign, that were arguably the two best dunks in the league that year. One of the two best. Simple. Spin move. Can't do nothing about it. To see the domination on that last graphic of New Jersey killing the Lakers points in the paint. Kobe. Uh, see, Jason Kidd was a fantastic defender. He played Kobe pretty damn well. He was up in his chest, body to body contact all the way through Kobe's move. Forced Kobe right into the help defender where they were waiting there for a double team on the shot attempt. Right here, see? Still didn't do anything. Kobe did it. JK did it. That was great defense. That's exactly what he was supposed to do. Best defense you could do without fouling. Force Kobe. Uh, I'm sure, that was the game plan. Force him certain directions, but it didn't matter, man. Kobe was that elite of a score. Look at this. Behind the back, hand in the face. Amazing defense. Didn't make a difference. Big shot, Rob, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Sit down, boy. Don't get that space. You gonna squeeze in? Don't matter. Uh, I'll never forget the the, the year the, where the Spurs stopped the four-peat from happening. They beat the Lakers, I think, in round two. Um, Lakers had a chance to tie that series. And uh, Robert Ory missed the big three-pointer from about the same position. It went in and out. It went in and out. Great defense. Now, see, in today's league, that would have been a foul. That would have been a foul. Clutch, clutch performance by Kobe. Extremely clutch performance. So much better on the road in the playoffs this year. He lost his ball to maybe five times before he finally made an unbelievable shot. But that's why you don't play it out because he is so big in these situations. Look at the Nets are all over the ball, and yet once he gets it, he's under control, and that's money. What a hell, hell of a move, hell of a shot. Clutch is a mofo. Clutch as a mofo. A heartbreaking loss for the Nets, for the Lakers. Another illustration of how well they face the pressure, in particular on the road in the postseason. Well, Jason Kidd seems to have this entire situation in perspective. He calls this current Laker team with two championships. He love me some Jason Kidd, though, man. I used to love watching Jay Kidd play. I mean, I, I like defense, man. So whenever you give me a you know a defensive guard that can also pass the ball like rarely anyone else ever could, I'm taking that all day, man. JK was highly intelligent. Sit down, boy. Coming out with the flying tomahawk, boy. Hand extended. What you want to do? Sit down. Mm. Don't jump. They learned. They learned already. You better not jump with this, man. You will get put on the poster. Do not jump. Good look up ahead to the diesel. Easy dunk. Can't do nothing with it. Defensive collapse there by the, by the New Jersey Nets. I really Fisher that wide open. Give me that. And one. Kobe is probably the best person in the history of the league. And if he was only second to anybody, it would be Mike. But... Shots like this, getting the defender up in the air and uh, converting on the jumper. Dude had about a million of one of those. Yeah, Devin George. Devin George. 
Simple passes, too. He, he hasn't really done any fancy kind of passes. He's just getting it done, just getting the job done. With all of Kobe Ryan's flair and showtime ability, he was extremely, extremely fundamentally sound. Ridiculously fundamentally sound. Buckets. Shooter's going to shoot, baby. Bang, bang. I'm gonna jump right into the mid range. Today's lead, they would have just took the three. See, that, that would have been an automatic three point attempt in today's lead. But, whoop. Kobe said, I'm gonna go to that mid range, baby. A little bit baseline on you. I thought Shaq was gonna roll harder and go straight into the post position. That was the other thing about Kobe's scoring prowess. Ooh. Is that he he was a threat from anywhere on the court. You'll see it all areas of the mid-range, baseline, mid, top mid, corner, diagonal, and then uh, beyond the three-point line as well. And he'll take it to the rim, do layups like this, or just dunk on your ass. Like, the dude was solid from everywhere. There was not a point on the court where Kobe was uncomfortable. You could not put him in an uncomfortable position. Just practice everything. The diesel with the soft touch. I'm gonna have to do a video about Shaq and how he doesn't get enough credit for being one of the most skilled big men to ever play the game. They just think he was a big brute that didn't really have any moves. Ooh, come on, Kobe. <laughs> oh my gosh. It did count, but it was beautiful to see. It was, it was beautiful to see. What a cleanup. Yeah, Shaq, Shaq was was supremely skilled. That be the three peak, baby. That be the three peak, baby. Youngest player to three championships, man. I, I could, back then I swore Kobe was gonna have like nine or ten in his uh, in his room. You know, history is history, and things didn't go down how I thought it would. But yeah, that's it, man. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal run by the Los Angeles Lakers to complete that three-peat. Kobe Bryant held his own. Kobe Bryant did not ride anybody's coattails. Kobe Bryant contributed. Kobe Bryant was an integral part to those championships with a stellar defense and stellar offensive performances. And knowing when to when to pass the ball, when to be aggressive with scoring. Yeah, he did have some bad shooting nights, but that wasn't the norm and that wasn't an everyday thing. And uh, he was always there for the clutch buckets. Always there hitting big shots throughout that playoff run. I don't think he gets enough credit for that stuff that he did. Forget that narrative. I'm not saying Shaq didn't deserve those finals MVPs. I'm not saying that. I'm saying is it's not some type of lop lopsided affair that everybody tries to make it out to be. And like I said, there's an argument to be made that throughout those Western Conference series that Kobe actually led the Lakers in some of those series, um, some of those runs, especially at 2000-2001. Kobe was just godly during, during that run. You could go watch, like I said, a video on that in the Kobe Bryant playlist. But that's all I got to say about it. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, shout out to all the Kobe fans out there. Um, there's not there's not a whole lot of us compared to the LeBron and Mike fans from what I've seen. But if you know any Kobe Bryant fans out here, tell them come on down to the channel, subscribe. We actually uh, pay homage to Kobe here. We go back and look at things. We look at myths. We look at fake narratives. We debunk them with proof and with context. So tell them to come on down and get into this Kobe Bryant content. You have a home here. 
like comment subscribe like comment and subscribe hit the bell stay notified and i'll catch you guys on the next one we out baby